All right, everyone. So for our second day of advanced Google, remember we've got this syllabus where we're looking at a calendar. And on the second day, that I've, what I've got here is that we're going to be talking about YouTube today. Next week, we'll be talking about Google Webmaster Tools, Google Analytics, all of that stuff. So you'll need to bring your password to log into your website, to edit your website next week. The fourth week, then we'll be talking about Google Drive and Google Forms. Today is YouTube. So let's say here, um, go ahead and open a web browser, anyone that you like. This is advanced Google, so I'm just going to be using Google Chrome. Google is a big company. It has Google Search. It has Gmail. It has Google Maps, Google Earth. It has Android. Did you know that Android is part of the Google conglomerate? Uh, it has Google self-driving autonomous cars. It has Google Glass. It has YouTube as well. Uh, if you didn't know, within the last six months or so, I believe, Google, for various reasons, created a brand new parent company, which is called Alphabet. So Google used to be the parent company on top of every Google product. But now they've created a new company, which is Alphabet. So actually, Alphabet is higher than Google. Alphabet then has subsidiaries, Google Search, Gmail, Google Cars, etc. Android, all of those are subsidiaries of the Alphabet parent company, created in 2015, sometime there. Sundar Pichai is the CEO. For all intents and purposes, everyone is still calling it Google, even though it's now technically Alphabet. But what I'm getting at is that YouTube is yet another Alphabet, is yet another YouTube company. So if you, if you browse over to YouTube.com, this is what we'll be talking about today. By some metrics, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world and the second largest social network. The largest, social net, the, the largest search engine in the world is Google, Google Search. It's got about 60% market share. And the largest social network in the world is Facebook. It's got about 1.5 billion users worldwide. 1.5 billion, not million, billion users. But by some estimates, YouTube is second in both of those realms because many people go to YouTube and directly type in how to use Peach, the brand new social network. They could, of course, do a Google search, how to use Peach, and there'll be plenty of results. And some results are coming in from YouTube because it's a Google property. But many more people are also simply going directly to YouTube, finding a video on how to do it, and it answers the question. So my company, look at this, two days ago we uploaded a video, how to use Peach, like a pro. So on this video here, it'll teach you how to set up the account, how to use it, why to use it, all of that. And so far in two days, it's got 77 views, so it's going up. And we'll be talking about YouTube today for this sort of purpose creating a presence on YouTube because that could lead to more site traffic that could improve your SEO ranking your ranking on the search engines that could uh, result in customer leads maybe even customer sales that could result in more exposure for your nonprofit organization whatever it is you're trying to do online so my company PMD interactive in short we're trying to get clients. We do web design, we do social media, we do video production, we do photography, we do human resource, we do all of that stuff. And so we're always trying to get clients. And here's one possible way. Uh, creating a video, a free video tutorial on a topic, like this hot topic, and uh, getting views, getting traffic to the home page. On the home page of the website is where we've got request a quote, or, you know, contact us, that sort of thing. So thinking outside the box, people often think, okay, I've got to get on Facebook, or I've got to get on Twitter. Are you thinking, I've got to get on YouTube? If you're not, 
you might be missing out because that's the next big thing, if not already. That's the thing now where more and more people are going and using to find something interesting and useful. Um, and if you're not there, it could, it could be detrimental to you. If you're there and your competitor is not, it could be a big boost. So there's a video there. I'll show you how, a little bit in a moment <gasps> how I created the video. Whoa. Not that one, but just think you, what I could do with that slow. So, at the end. so then there's a 12 minute video here on how to uh, but eventually um, sign up, use Peach. So, I'm going to create it on my iPad, so, talking so, how, about okay, how well, to use it, that pointing shows up things out, camera and examples and such. That. Um, creating that kind of video is technically not that difficult. And in the social media class, usually, depending on its length, we spend one day on how to use YouTube, how to upload a video, how to get views for it, how to get traffic to it, how to get subscribers. And then on another day, we spend time on how to create a video. Because if you show up to YouTube empty-handed without a video to share, what, what, what are you going to get out of it? So in the social media class, I would spend a day on creating a video, uploading and optimizing a video. In this class, we're going to spend time on creating a YouTube account and uploading a video and optimizing it. I've already got a video for you. You don't have time to create a video. If you take the other class, we would create a video. And so, we're going to create an account in a moment, upload a video. This can, again, um, when we created Google+, Plus, this is, uh, you can do this as a test account, you can do this as a serious account, if you do do it as a test account, you can delete it. I'll show you how to delete it. And so it doesn't hurt for you to create a free YouTube account and then use it. Make mistakes, delete it. You can create as many as you want. I'm going to back up. And remember, earlier in the day, I gave you a handout. Now, I usually have a specifically prepared version of this handout for these classes. So on this, I apologize. I'm giving you the handout for my other class, CIS 257, at Southwestern College, where we do a lesson on YouTube with homework. So this is asking for a homework assignment and such. Ignore all of that. I, I thought I had ready the one that I have for this class, which is no homework. But here you can see how I run that class at Southwestern College where there is homework, where there is grades, where there is um, certificates and such. So you get that out of the folder, the network folder, and let's look at that file. CIS 257, number 12, it's the 12th assignment, YouTube. You can print it a little later. But the point of it is, is I've got some info and links. YouTube is the granddaddy of all video sharing sites. It's not the only one. Does anyone know any other video sharing sites out there? Vimeo? It's the number one. YouTube is definitely number one. Any other? Vimeo, Vimeo is another one. Does anyone know any other video sites? There's Dailymotion. There's Vimeo. There's YouTube. Those are some of the big ones. I would really focus on YouTube and possibly Vimeo. That's a different discussion for another class, but there's more than one video sharing site, up and coming ones. There's also one called something like youvoo.com or something. No, no, it's youko.com. Y O U K O.com. I believe it's Japanese. And that has a lot of uh, action also, but more in Asia. So there's many video sharing sites. So YouTube is the big one, founded in 2005. YouTube is 10 years old. Does it feel like YouTube's been around forever? It's only 10 years. Or maybe you think 10 whole years. The very first video on YouTube was actually shot at the San Diego Zoo. You can still find it if you look up first YouTube video. You'll find it and it's someone recording like 12 seconds at the lion pen or something. That's the first YouTube video. Did you ever hear about Gangnam Style? That was that music video by the Korean artist, South Korean artist Psy. His was the first video that reached a billion views. 1 billion views on YouTube, and then eventually it went up to like, I don't know, 10 billion, 20 billion, lots and lots of views. Uh, so lots of people are using YouTube for fun, frivolous stuff like watching the latest cat videos to 
more serious stuff like maybe, you know, a video about donating to our animal shelter. It's the whole gamut. YouTube has gone on to host countless videos and create many viral sensations. YouTube is a great social network to tap into because it is integrated with Google+, and we can post anything. It's integrated with Google Search. Uh, lots of people are on it. So again, anything about an assignment, just ignore that. Uh, ignore that, ignore these tasks. If you want to do this yourself, great. That'll be extra practice, but this, there's no homework in this class. Don't worry about any of that. And anyway, 2014 was a while ago. What I want to bring up to your attention are these sections here and then this one down here. Tips for creating great videos. I've got a couple of links there for you to research on your own how to create videos. One is over here, creating professional videos online. And this one is Vimeo, their video school. They've got this free course on creating interesting videos over on Vimeo. I'm going to take a quick look at these six types of videos and explain them because you might decide I'll get into YouTube but what do I what do I do what do I post I'm already having a hard enough time managing Twitter well here's ideas six possible categories of ideas of types of videos to create you've got unboxing screen capture tutorial how to review lists and advertisements. This is not all-inclusive. There are other kinds that I didn't list here. Um, but let's take a few, look at a few examples. So unboxing. I don't know what an unboxing is. I'm about to tell you. Unboxing, if you click on a link, it'll open it up in YouTube. You have to be a good boy. After the, after the ad. Each other. Mm. <laughs> Lamar Wilson. How you doing? Good to see you. Lamar Wilson here, and I have some bad news. My car is in the shop, guys. It is. I I pushed it. Let me pause at this point. Uh, Lamar Wilson. What he's doing is he's engaging in a video known as an unboxing video. Literally, what an unboxing video is: someone opening up a box in the most literal sense, but really to showcase a product. So this YouTuber has 610,000 subscribers. This particular video has 71,000 views, and it's got 2,000 thumbs up and 48 thumbs down. People really like this video, and all he's really doing is opening up a box of Nintendo toys. There's unboxing videos about everything. Hardware, computer hardware, um, vacuum cleaners, um, you know, a package of cookies. And you think, well, why is that a thing? Let's watch a little more. Too far. I pushed it. So I drove to Japan. I'm going to skip a little further. To Amiibo. Ooh, we're going to unbox those in a second. And then I went to the UK because uh, they sent me this book. It has like all the the pages labeled for for the Series 1 thing. And so you put the cards in the corner. It's going to take a couple days to get get fixed cards. I'm not unboxing. I'm not going to uncard them, unpack them on camera because, you know, those videos do whatever. I'll show the whole thing too. Okay. Um. Okay. So he is tapping into something that everyone is interested in at this point in time, which is November third. Um, Nintendo is selling these uh, these toys, and they're selling really well. So he's tapped into that, and he's unboxing it, and he's talking about it, giving his impressions on it, his opinion, his review about it, and it seems to be resonating because then it's also got. 367 comments. People are really paying attention to him. I'm going to go up to search here and say unboxing uh, Netgear NAS, network attached storage. You're going to find here 15,000 results from a variety of channels, a variety of users, Linus Text. Tips, gaming till disconnected, the digital digest, hardware unboxed. So all of these people are unboxing this computer hardware known as a NAS, network attached storage. Basically, it's a bunch of hard drives to back up your computer. 
and everyone's got their take on it. The, the 202, the 104, the 104, etc. So everyone's got a video on this two years ago, one year ago, 11 months ago, seven months ago. 1,600 views, 4,700 views, 5,000 views, 43,000 views. This one is a um, this one is a verified channel because anyone can create any channel. I can create a brand new YouTube channel called Hillary Clinton and upload my Hillary Clinton videos. But there's only one official Hillary Clinton channel, if she has one. Um, so everyone here is talking about the same sort of thing, and it's got views. Um, 54,000, 5,000, 195. It was just uploaded a week ago, looking at the 212. So I'm telling you this because this is a possible idea. All six of these examples are ideas of what kind of videos you could do. You yourself could unbox one of your products. Let's say I'm using the fictional company Victor's Bakery. And what I'm going to do in an unbox unboxing video is a self-unboxing video where I record myself or someone in the company opening up one of our cupcakes. Let's say we ship cupcakes throughout the US and we put them in a ni really nice box. So we make a video where we talk about it, we unbox it, we show it off, we say, look, we even put a little, a little card inside wishing you a great day. And so what you're doing is you're sort of doing a little bit of advertising for yourself. This is our product. This is what you're going to get. The opposite side of that is what if on your website or on your Twitter you say, hey, everyone, show us your unboxing videos and we'll pick the best one and you'll get 10% off your next product. So that could entice people themselves to create their own unboxing video of your product. And at worst, you're out 10% you're out of a sale from that person that, that won the contest. At best, you got a lot of free advertising, and someone might have a lot of followers on YouTube, and then their video of your product goes viral. And you get more traffic back to your product by enticing them to unbox your product. So this is one kind of video, and it can be as professional or as amateur as, 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 as possible. Let's see if I can find an amateur one to compare. IT departments have more. And what I mean by that is uh, the professional, we saw Lamar, he had like a cool title, music, different camera angles, he has a personality. Let's see if I can find a more basic one. Back again today with another unboxing Cut. and review video for you. We're going to be taking a look at the Netgear ReadyNAS. This is the four bay version. It takes four three terabytes. So I'm very excited as he is about that brand new product the ReadyNAS 4000. So this is one of the ones you can do if you think, I can't make a video like Lamar. You can, you can put a, any kind of camera um, on the desk or on a tripod or whatever and talk to the camera and show the product and such and he's got five and a half thousand views. Now yes, it also comes from, he's got nearly a thousand followers, subscribers, so that helps. But you never know. You never know if you're handheld video, you could be holding it like this and talking to it, that could become a viral hit. You don't know. So this particular video, okay, I guess he does have an animation here. Of uh, 12 terabytes. Um, there should be plenty of storage space for what I need to use it for. Let's get it open, take a look inside. So he did change angles, but he did just put the camera down on a tripod, and then he's talking about it and saying what's good. There is a USB 2 port, power button, and then across from there there'll be some status LEDs. So there's no wrong or right way to make any of these kinds of videos, but it's good to do research on what the competition is doing. So many times this kind of video is someone showing the product, explaining everything about the hardware, and that's just about it. And yes, as we're seeing from these examples, these, these get views. Even if you have modest 400 views or a modest 20 views, we're going to talk about, well, okay, great, I've got views to my video, what else? We've got a description down here that we can write as much as we want, full of keywords, so that when people search, they can find my video. And we can put links here. Here's our uh, unboxing of our latest cake sensation. Click here to buy it. 
So traffic directly to whatever website. Can you ask about mm -hmm. the, the verified thing? I noticed that before. Can you talk about what that means? And then the second thing I noticed on this one is, so he had a business name that showed up in that photographic, but this is posted by a guy named Don Shirley, and it doesn't have a verified. And so it's a little confusing why there, his business name didn't appear there. And so what, those two are two questions. So this is, a, this is his channel name. The name of his channel on YouTube is John Shirley. We saw that his website was John or was tech, techiereviews.com or something. Um, th there's no right or wrong way to do that. He could have kept it both the same, the same brand. He could have had right here techiereviews.com and his graphics at techiereviews. He could have had here John Shirley here, and he could have had his website johnshirleyreviews.com. Doesn't really matter, although that's a good point. It should be perhaps a little more consistent. That can be changed. I'm not sure why he has it. It's resulting 900 subscribers, so so there. The the review, the verified thing. That's not that easy to get. Actually, you have to be really one of these big names with a big following, with like real traffic and such. So I don't have one. I don't work with any client that has one. It's it's kind of hard to get because as I said, anyone can create a YouTube account. Anyone can create a Twitter account. But then the like the real Justin Bieber needs to have his real account and it's verified so no one else creates a fake one. But me, plain old PMD Interactive, who cares? They're not going to verify me unless I get to, you know, 10,000 followers, perhaps. Then I might get verified. So for all intents and purposes, us little guys, we're probably never going to get verified unless we get lots of viewers and lots of traffic. And verified means your own specific channel that no one else can copy. So Technically, they can still copy it, but this is just proof that you're the official one. Mm -hmm. If I search techiereviews.com and I get seven channels, they're all named techiereviews.com, but only one has a check mark that is the official one that YouTube vets. Mm -hmm. Yes? So he used a professional Netgear spinning logo thing in there. Obviously, people, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but he probably didn't make that. He borrowed it. This one? Yeah. No, that's his own company logo. I don't know his company, and that's the disconnect here that we're saying, his company seems to be techiereview.com, and he's talking about the Netgear product. It but Well, just based on that, it does look much more professional, yes, than, than what he's done so far, and that's a disconnect as well. But he chose to spend all his budget on making that graphic rather than making a nicer looking review. I don't know. I don't take it that way. I, I've seen enough videos that I don't take it that way. But if you do, then okay, that's something for you to think about. Make your videos feel that, you know, consistent. It, it, it is, yeah. Yes. That due to the possibility that checking reviews for YouTube is already taken as a name? It could be. Because up on the address bar, if I click on John Shirley's channel, oh, I see his channel, and up on the top, which is here's another funny thing. So you you can claim a name up here. Right now his official YouTube channel is youtube.com slash gibberish. It's not, for example, youtube.com slash PMD Interactive. You can claim a short name like that. If you don't, you get gibberish. But you do get a unique address. For some reason, John over here doesn't have his unique address, even though he can totally claim it. So that point that you're saying back there might be part of that. He couldn't claim that Techie Review's address, so he had to... He did nothing. He just kept the, the, the weird long name. Yes? Are you going to teach us how to create that kind of channel? Because I tried doing it and... Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, let's move on here. Let's look at some of these other types of videos. Some ideas perhaps for you to start thinking about an unboxing video. Another one is a screen capture tutorial. We're going to see that some of these kinds of videos bleed into each other, that an unboxing might actually also be related to a list kind of video. Or a screen capture tutorial is also related to a review kind of tutorial. 
I made these delineations, but oftentimes they bleed together. So let's see an example of a screen capture tutorial. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos and we're going to talk about Android development. Now, we need three pieces. So this kind of video, as I said in the handout here, this is a screen capture tutorial in that I am capturing my screen. I'm recording everything that I'm doing on the screen. That definitely bleeds into one of these tutorial videos because I'm showing what's happening on my computer screen so that you can do it and learn from it, from a tutorial. So this kind of video is also could be much easier for you to create than the other ones because all you need is the software and I'll tell you which software in a moment all you need is the software to create this when I do these classes I've got this software running it's recording what I'm doing on my screen my mouse movements and such and my voice and everything and that's my screen capture type of video I uploaded this one's got 132 reviews I mean 132 views 123 subscribers. Um, think about yourself. What if you are also some sort of company that is very tech oriented? You can record your screen and um, create these kinds of videos. Yes? The subscriber that you lose, uh, the subscriber is to your channel, and the views are this particular item on your channel. Is that correct? Exactly. You have views for individual videos views for the whole channel in total and also subscribers to the channel. Someone doesn't have to be a subscriber to watch your video. So sometimes you might have higher subscribers than views or vice versa. You might have lower subscribers with lots of views. Maybe your video went viral. This type of video I created with this software right here. This is free software for Windows and Mac. It's called Open Broadcaster Software, OBS. You can look it up online you can get it for free, Windows or Mac, Linux 2, I believe. It, uh, I don't have time to talk about how to use it, but they've got great help and such. And basically, it lets you record your screen, a web camera, because I could set this up. When I'm doing these videos, I could set it up that I'm also um, on screen, that I'm also showing myself on screen as I do these lectures. But I would think that's a little distracting. Question? Uh, I, I managed to do a screen capture on QuickTime on my Mac. Yeah, so QuickTime can do it also. There's many kinds of software out there. I could have set this up also. As I've got my screen recording, I'm also recording myself. But I take up too much space, so I don't do that. And I want you to be here in person. So this software is very powerful. I really like it. It's free. It's amazing that it's free. And um, I use it for this class. And that's how I made also that video on how to use Peach. Uh, that was a little more complex. I had to be recording off my iPad. Um, but if you are interested on in recording from your iPad or Android to do these kinds of tutorials, there's a software out there called Team Viewer. It's really good software. Also free for personal use, technically. Commercial use, I don't remember the price, probably $50 for a license. But Team Viewer, I really like that in order to record what I'm doing off my device. So maybe I'm going to do screen capture types of videos where I teach someone how to use an app, how to use my app. Maybe I've got a company and I've got an app on the Android store, the Apple store, and I'm teaching, I'm making a video, you know, two minute long video, how to use our app. And I'm recording from my device, TeamViewer lets you do that. TeamViewer plus Open Broadcaster is what I used to record the Peach video. Question. Was Open Broadcaster the first screen capture that you talked about? Yes. <clears throat> Open Broadcaster Software. OBSproject.com. That's commercial. For Open Broadcaster, I believe it's completely open for any purpose. Yes. Because it's open source. So the screen capture tutorial. We can look up those much more many more examples, of course. Think about yourself. Let's say you are a graphic designer. You're trying to get a job as a graphic designer. One of the tactics of any business is the first hit is free. So give something away for free to entice people to purchase more or to follow through more. I'm a graphic designer. I want to get a job designing you know, flyers or posters for local companies. 
So I'm going to put out a free screen capture tutorial with my with my tips. You know, I'm browsing websites and I'm saying, hey everyone, if you're a small business, make sure you visit bbb.org. Make sure you go over to this site make, and do that. And I'm recording what I'm doing on the screen. I put that up on my YouTube channel, give it away for free, promote it also on my Facebook or Twitter or my website to try to get views. And we'll talk about other ways to get views for your videos when we get to that point. But that's a possibility as well for you. Perhaps create a screen capture tutorial type of video, upload it, promote it, and I get your views and traffic. Oftentimes these kinds of videos, number two, really ble bleeds into number three, how to, how to do something. Um, but um, for example, let me show you one that isn't so tech related. I'm going to open up the how to type of video example. I'm Celeste with E.B. Stone and today we're going to be talking about how to plant tomatoes. First you want to plan the location for your vegetables. Make sure this spot gets at least six hours of sunlight. There's several different ways you can plant tomatoes. I would say from the examples that I'm showing, this is one of my favorite ones because it's so professional looking. If we break it down, we see that we've got a, a long shot or a bust shot. We've got a close-up handheld. We've got another shot where it's back up on a tripod like that. It's solid. There was in here a really close-up of the dirt right there with some cool bokeh, some good blur text down here different scenes. This is one of the most professional ones I'll show you. But this doesn't mean, so text here, this doesn't mean that they spent thousands of dollars to make this. You can make something like this right from your phone and it's the software that helps you edit it together. I'll mention a couple of the software that I recommend and again if we were in the social media class we would spend one day making a video. I would provide you videos, we would cut them together, put music, make it really professional. But at the very least, we can record from our phones which or tablets, which are very good results. There's a still photo right there. So this is a very professional video. They got 57,000 views on that, highly rated, less than 200 subscribers. And they haven't gotten around to putting their company logo yet, but that's their address, their channel from 2010, a few comments. You have to back up and then think in total, why am I going to be on YouTube? I've already got enough to do to run my business. Why do I need another social network? Again, all of the benefits here are that it could give you more traffic back to your website. EB Stone Organics sounds like they're selling organic produce, organic seeds, or food, or whatever. Here's a free video. Plant those tomatoes. Buy them here with a link. Is there a link? Yep, right there. No, uh, yeah, right here, ebstone.org. For more info on products, please check out here. 57,000 people, maybe out of maybe a small percentage of that, actually did click on that link and went to buy the product. When we get to it later, I would say to, to really take advantage of this, I would have recommended to her make that link visible before having to show more. A lot of people perhaps might not click show more and never see that link. I would recommend put your link first, then talk about the link, so that if no one ever clicks that show more, they'll still see your link. This is what you would call above the fold. Before opening up the fold, you see it. That comes from the newspaper. Remember those things? The newspaper is folded. The newspaper is vertical, but it's folded. It's folded and it's stacked there. Above the fold is the most important thing to see, because you're never going to see the back until you pick it up. Above the fold still applies on websites and things like this. If I visit my website, this is what I see first. It's above the fold before I scroll. The most important thing on my website should be the first thing that I see. Same thing with here on this description. People might, might not ever click show more. Take advantage of above the fold to write the most important call to action there. The link, for example. This type of video, again, is pretty advanced, but with practice you would be able to do something like this. If you break it down again, I could have shot this from a phone. You know, let's put the phone on a steady surface to record a little bit, have good lighting. One of the things that kills a video 
is either bad video or bad sound. Isn't that what a video is? Visuals and sound? So if any of those two is not so good, you might have amazing visuals, terrible sound, then it's not such a good video. You might have terrible uh, visuals, but great sound, still might not be such a good video. You need both. Good visuals, good audio. And that takes practice because this thing might shoot 1080p video, beautiful video. But if I'm standing here and you're sitting there and from this distance I'm recording you, tell me about your company. The microphone is not going to pick it up. Microphone technology is still lagging. So if I'm that far away from you, but you really explained your company really well and it looks beautiful and the light is right on you and it looks nice and I can't hear you, no amount of editing in a video editor is going to fix that sound. So the video is not so good. So video, so visuals and audio, make sure as best as possible you create, which is lots of light on the subject and very audible. Bets. Regardless of how you plant your tomatoes, they all basically can be planted the same way. Picking the right type of tomatoes is very important. Oh, tomato question. Yeah, do you think that she's got the close shot and the, and the kind of the farther away shot? Did she use two cameras, do you think? Or how? Because it doesn't look like she, it's a zoom. And stuff, you zoom in that front, so it's almost like it were two cameras. Thing. Before man invented zoom, God invented walking up to someone. Yeah, you don't see any motion in that. They pause it. They pause it. When they're far away, they record a little bit. Then they say, okay, cut. Then they walk up a little bit closer, and they do the next shot with the same camera. And that was a little shaky, so it looks like they held it. And that's not bad. That's just a different technique. When it was far away, they set it down, and therefore it's set and steady. Yeah. So that's that whole editing of it. Um, in Hollywood movies, for example, for example, let's say the Star Wars movies, usually it takes nine months to record the main action of a Star Wars movie, and it takes two and a half years to edit it. When the prequel trilogy was coming out, 1999, that movie came out. Three years later, Attack of the Clones. Three years later, Revenge of the Sith. So it took three years to edit those videos, it took six or nine months to record everything, but you're going to spend a lot more time on the editing. And when I do this for companies, that's where all the time gets eaten up. We take our cameras, we record the action and such, we have an idea what we're recording, we get back to the editing software, and that's what takes a while to get it just right. How does this video left out uh, now with a big ad? And... It's kind of random. Um, for various reasons. By default, um, it also depends on me. As I'm browsing different videos, kind of like if you've got Pandora, um, they play an ad once in a while if you get the free version of Pandora. Here, you watch a video or two, you don't get any ads, then the next one might have an ad, you might get two ads in a row, then you won't get any ads for five videos. It's part of the YouTube algorithm. You can also yourself choose to turn on ads or not to some degree. So we don't control too much of that. It's really about YouTube and that's how they make their money. Every time an ad gets clicked, they make money. And we'll talk about that. We can use YouTube to make money off of our videos. We can get some of that money for people clicking on ads. We'll talk about that. Yes? You mentioned the name of the video software. The ones that I recommend are for Windows, if you've got a Windows computer, all right here, video editing software, Windows. I recommend Windows Movie Maker. It's from Microsoft, so it's officially a Microsoft product. It's free to download. It's the one I've been using most recently the past probably two years. When I get on my Mac, on Mac, I recommend iMovie, plain old iMovie. They're both free. They're both for enthusiasts and beginners. They're both pretty effective. I'll show examples of the videos that my company has made. And it's either been through Windows Movie Maker or iMovie. Either, neither of these come by default installed on your computer. On your Mac, you have to go to the App Store and download free iMovie. 
On Windows, you have to go to the App Store and download free Windows Movie Maker. But once you've got both the software, you can make these kinds of movies. Obviously, much more professional software, so I'll say this one here, Enthusiast. 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 Is that how you spell it? Enthusiast. I don't have spell check on this. Um, enthusiast. Pro software. There's so many of them. Um, there's Adobe Premiere. Premiere Class is the model. Yeah. Oh. There's cool. Elements to Premiere Element. Premiere. Premiere is the big expensive one. Adobe Premiere uh, Elements. Not so expensive. Mm -hmm. It's less than a hundred dollars. Mm. Premiere is like I don't know, thousands or hundreds. Yes, but remember, technically, if you get student software, you're using it for t for student work. So technically, then after you graduate and you're still using the student version of it, technically you're not using it right and you have to spend the extra $500, but I won't tell on you. <laughs> Premiere, Premiere Elements, Adobe does a Premiere Elements, which is like the cheaper, more consumer-friendly version, the Premiere is the pro one. They've also got, if you didn't know, Adobe Photoshop Elements, because Photoshop itself is big, professional, hard to use, and expensive, but there's Photoshop Elements, which is a little simpler and and less expensive. Um, and then you've got Final Cut Pro, that's another big one, big famous one, very um, expensive. There's also, I believe, Sony Vegas. <clears throat> There's one that's been around a long time, and I've used it various times. I haven't used it in a long time, but I remember, I remember using it like 10 or 15 years ago, and it was okay, but they probably made it better, and this one is from ULead. I don't remember what it's called at the moment, but ULead is another big name in, in video software. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of other software out there. Those are the big ones. Does anyone have an opinion on any other software out there? Roxio. Roxio, sure, sure, yeah. Or a great zoom feature where you can just pan back mm -hmm. and then you can create your own zoom and it looks like one of the expensive cameras mm -hmm. that would do it. Cool. Do these ones have that type of thing? Yeah. It's video stabilization. Um, yeah. There's plenty of them out there. Um, but probably you're going to be focusing on. Movie Maker or iMovie, and the software will vary, the buttons will vary, and the interface will vary, but the concepts of good videos are universal. That's why in my handout I have those two links. Check those links out because these will teach you the concepts. It doesn't matter the hardware or the software. The concepts are what's always important. So I used YouTube recently. I bought a new place and I had to look up how to fix a doorbell. Mm -hmm. So I'm joking, to, I'm joking to my friends because I'm finding all these little things. The house wasn't exactly a fixer-upper, but I'm kind of seeing that here and there. And I'm joking to my friends that I'm saying, I'm going to create a website called How the F Did This Get Broken? Because, <laughs> um, because I had a broken doorbell. I had um, a horrible carpet. I had, what other little things? Oh, there's terrible um, oil stains on the, on the driveway. And it's like, how, how the heck did this happen? So I had to look up how to break, fix a doorbell. And I learned how the doorbell works. It's really cool and easy. And I didn't get electrocuted. So I watched, <laughs> I watched one of these videos, and I fixed my doorbell. Listen, yes. On the, but my frustration with, with YouTube, and I don't know, it maybe there's a way of fixing this, is if you go to look for training, and the trainings are all numbered, <laughs> And there's, I don't know a way of, if it goes through, if you go through lesson number one, then the next video is good. There's no way of actually having you to uh, uh, search them in the, chrono, in the chronological order or in the numerical order. That's true. That is a big problem. There's not much I can do about it because that's the fault of the ones creating the videos, that they perhaps didn't take advantage of playlists. Your channel can create playlists which groups together videos related. Sometimes, for example, here's our class, right? These videos that I'm giving out, all of the classes are here, one long stream of 800 videos. But for a particular class, such as the, um, the Wednesday SEO class, you know, here it's got it, it's got it A, B, C, it's got it out of order. 
YouTube automatically puts it in a weird order, but you can control the order in a playlist. So if I create a playlist, which is all our classes are in playlists, and I go over to the Wednesday SEO class, it's got eight videos, and I have to manually go in then and put them in the right order. So here we go, A, B, C, D, and then A, B, C. So, so can you do that to other people's videos? The closest is you can put them into you into playlists you create, but you still have to find those videos, put them into your playlist, and order them. So all of these that perhaps you're not getting them in order, it's because the the channel that uploaded it didn't take the time to make playlists. Mm -hmm. I thought there was some plug in or something that was simple. There might be. I'm not sure. It doesn't have anything to do with the way they're made or anything. No. It, it, it really only orders them in the order that you uploaded them. So in this case, they are, they are CBA from last week and then E to A from this week. So it does put them in a vague order, but it's still up to me. And remember, they are not paying me for this, so I might forget to do it. For me to put it in the exact order it needs to be in, but at least I'm putting them into playlists to keep them grouped. Let's move on. So many kinds of how-tos, thinking about it as your company. I used YouTube also a few years ago. I bought a light box. Uh, we do photography. So this is a box that um, the kit came with a product light box and a studio light box. It's basically a big cube with a semi-translucent white um, sheet all around it. And so you can put a product into this cube and control the light so that the product looks nice. There's a small one about that big, and then there's one as big as me, so that someone can be inside and take good photography. Well, that huge six foot by six foot box folds down to something this small. So when you unfold it, it pops open, it's really big, great. Time to put it away. I had a hard time putting it back into a tiny space. I looked it up on the YouTube channel, How to Fold a Light Cube. And they showed me the trick, so I was able to do it. Think about that for your own products. Do you have some sort of product that perhaps requires a little bit of how-to help? You can have someone else in the company holding onto the phone and recording you and showing you how to do it. You, of course, have to be careful about the audio and the light and the video. But that could be a possibility for how-to videos, how to use my product. Um, Reviews. This kind of sounds obvious, but let's take a look at one. So about the ads, again, we can set this up. We can call, we can activate what is known as monetization. We can turn on a couple of options in our YouTube channel to be able to make money off of our YouTube channel. Your videos, you're uploading your videos and you're going to be making money off of them every time Basically, every time someone clicks on an ad, YouTube sees that and credits you some amount of money. So that's that whole advertising. We hate it as consumers, but as producers, we love that. We're producing YouTube videos because we want, we want to share something great, but I want to make money. I can make money off of YouTube videos. And I haven't d been doing monetization that long, but I've made a cool $10 off of YouTube just by uploading videos, the ways we'll talk about. So let's show another one here. This is a review, Google Glass, the thing that was going to change the world but didn't yet. Mm -hmm. Google created this cool technology back in 2013. Let's check this quick video. You should be seeing also the length of these. You don't have to have a 10-minute YouTube video. One-minute video is fine. Some videos are three hours long, sure. Some video, that one's, is that right? Eight hours long. Right. Seconds, minutes, hours, yeah, an eight-hour-long video. And it has 24,000 views. That doesn't mean people are watching eight hours straight. They can jump around to different portions of the video. They can save it on their playlist and come back. But there used to be a limit, I believe, of 10 minutes YouTube videos. Then they put it up to 15, and then now there's no limit. So I have uploaded a three hour long video, and it does have like 200 views. Um, but there's such a huge range of video lengths. There's no right or wrong one. You'll decide what's right or wrong based on your statistics. When we create the account, we'll be able to see our statistics, what's working. I'm uploading five, long, five minute long videos and people only stick around for two minutes. Great, I'll start to create two and a half long minute videos. Yes? 
Are you able with those long videos create chapters within that within the YouTube software, or is it just straight from start to end and you just gotta click it wherever you want? They don't have exactly chapters how you might think, like let's say a DVD menu. That'd be great. But what you can do is within your description, you can create chapters. Within your description, you can write a time code, you know, 005, which is product review. 0100, you know, five seconds in is that chapter. 30 seconds in is that chapter. Two minutes in is that chapter. So that's the closest you can do. Within your description, you can sort of create chapters, links to different times in your video. Well, you can actually link it and jump to that time. Yeah. That helps us. Do you get a credit per view if they just watch a portion? Yes, I think it's 30 seconds. You have to watch at least 30 seconds of your video. It might be a little higher than that. But yeah, if they only watch, you know, two seconds of it, that won't count. I believe it has to be 30 seconds and higher. Let's check this out here. Hi, Brian Tong here from CNET.com, and in my hands, yep, I have Google Glass. This really has the whole tech world buzzing. We want to really break down what this is. Now, the first thing is not everyone can get a pair of these. You had to be part of Google's Explore program, and they cost $1,500. They don't come cheap. But what this is really for is for developers, uh, you know, people that are trying to come up with new apps and ways to use the actual Google Glass. And what you see here is this is a frame here. It's not actually a pair of glasses. It's a thin titanium and sturdy frame. And what it does is it has this piece of glass right here. This is where an image is projected or kind of the heads-up display for what you have here. So let me show you how these work. I'm going to put these glasses on in. <laughs> Kev, I make these look good. Check it out, all right? But the first thing you have to do is, first of all, you can either tap the side or do a little head bob, and it activates the screen. You can see it turn on, and I'm gonna start by saying, okay, glass. Okay, let's give this a shot. Okay, glass. I have a variety of options, and here I'm gonna say, record a video. And you'll see my screen change, and now you guys can see what I see. I have Michael and Jay here. Hey, boys, say what's up, wave hi. There you go, right? Now, you can also do a lot of other things with this. You can um, use them for map directions. You can actually Google items, names, people, or places. And it does require a data connection, so that means you're gonna have to have a phone tethered to this over Bluetooth or even over Wi-Fi. So my first impressions of glass, I mean, these things are amazing. This is really the future, and we've never seen anything like this, but wearing them is, is a little socially awkward. Yo, Jay, what's up, bro? You're gonna kick it later tonight, man? Okay. <laughs> Really, this is the future, and you know it can only get better. For CNET.com, I'm Brian Tong. Okay, so this is another example of one of the professional ones. They've got a million subscribers. CNET.com's been around 20 years on the web. And uh, you saw here two cameramen to record the, the action. And actually, they were using not, you know, not a $10,000 camera rig. They were using these pretty much off-the-shelf Canon or Nikon cameras. They did have a, a very nice steady cam sort of shoulder-mounted thing right here. See, they're holding, those are plain old Canon cameras, basically, $500. And uh, they've got that, that's probably like $2,000 or so, and then the audio and all of that. So they're a little bit more professional set up, and they've got a whole studio and, and all of that. They're a big name in tech. And then Brian, he's, a, he's one of the reviewers, reporters, tech reporters. So that's got 33,000 views, lots of likes, uh, lots of comments. Um, the description has these links, so a link over to watch more of their hooked up um, pieces. And they did what you said too, they put the link at the top. Right at the top, exactly. So I didn't have to do show more, it was, it was right there at the top and it's an active link. If I show more, then it's got all of this. They really did it professionalizing what show is this and the season of the episode. Links, these are links, these are also active links to other people on YouTube and their, and their Twitter or whatever, so just getting more traffic over to different people. All of these people have different channels and so forth. So uh, breaking it further down, on this video it's got many things here that I would say that we're going to talk about. Did you see at the very top left corner? Subscribe to Hooked Up. These are annotations. We'll be talking about annotations. You see these that they pop up. Some are, some are subtle. But unfortunately, many times these are very garish. Suddenly, you get a pop up right on the screen on his face that says, Don't forget to subscribe. Or click here for another video. Um, so, that needs a little bit of finesse so that you're not distracting your audience. We'll talk about annotations, creating active links right on the video. You've probably seen videos that at the very end, then it's got four little thumbnails 
of more videos, and each of those are actively clickable. We can talk about how to create that to further get people to watch more of your videos. In any social media, the more people follow you, interact with you, pay attention to you, and the more possibility then that you accomplish the goal you're looking for. I'm trying to sell cupcakes. I've got a YouTube channel that we've got some of these reviews. I'm going to review today Red Mill Arrowroot Flower, opposed to, you know, King Flower Classic All Purpose. And I'm going to have further links to go to more videos. This is the classic type of annotation that perhaps people are becoming a little numb to. And so Google or YouTube added recently a new type of annotation they call cards, which, let's see if I can find one on this video, it's a little older, but on some other, well, there's also this other one here. Let me get back to that one, what that one is. But let me find one of these cards. I can show it to you, one right over here. Um, There's this video on finance. This is one that I actually made myself about opinions on finance. And at a certain point here, what appears... Oh, here we go. So watch this. As this video plays, eventually on the top right corner, a brand new little unobtrusive icon will appear. My logo there, but a little icon in it. A little icon right there. That, um, that little info icon. That one is the new style of annotations. They're called cards. Because what's cool about these are that if you click on them, they give you a better preview of other videos that you can direct people to. This particular video talks about ETFs, starting the new year investing, but then it's recommended, why don't you also check out last year's investing tip, and then what about this other investing video, uh, video from this channel? So cards, these are the newer generation of annotations, where they're a little more subtle, they don't hit you over the head, with like a big garish box right on the screen, although you can still create those. And then you can see it popped up right there to remind you that exists. You can also, we'll see how to add our own little company icon. And that sort of thing. There it is. See, it popped up. Suggested. Investing made easy. BYM. So these are the new generation that's going to hang out there in the corner. And um, we'll look at how to do that. But this kind of this kind of uh, suggestion we can also do on another screen it's a little more set up but here's another way like let's say you're trying to cross pollinate to your videos cross promote your videos uh, you're gonna make a few videos like let's say this is probably a big goal for most people but once a month make a video you know one minute long make a one minute long video once a month or so and as you start to build a roster of videos, you can start to then say, you saw this video, why not also watch that video? To keep them on your channel, to get them to subscribe, to get them to click on your link, buy your product. Um, let's look at lists example. What do you call that particular Card. Card. They're cards, yes. Okay, that one's gone for some reason, so I'll search for top five WordPress plugins. So we'll see a variety of results. Some of them are going to be ads, also like a regular Google search. You can pay for that as well. Nearly a million views. You can also pay to get your videos placed higher than the rest. Eight months ago, James Stafford uploaded the top seven must-have WordPress plugins, 120,000 views. My best WordPress plugins, 2015, from a year ago, 16,000, on and on and on, 179,000 results. There is also an art and a science of YouTube optimization, which we'll be talking about today. But I'm getting at this kind of video. Top five plugins, top ten travel destinations, top two, you know, top top seven presidents, bottom five. WordPress plugins, the worst video software. I could make a bunch of kinds of videos like this where I where I count down or count up 
the best or the worst of whatever. These are very popular types of videos. In your own particular business, the same sort of thing. Let's say I am an investment professional, and I have a channel here. I'm going to have the top five, the, the, the top five worst mutual funds to get into. And I have a video there that I can then create in any way that I want, because it will probably be related somewhat to a how-to video, somewhat to a screen sharing video, etc. Let's look at just one off the top here. It's a professional introduction, probably designed in Final Cut Pro or some other kind of pro software. In Windows Movie Maker and such, iMovie, we can create some of those kinds of intros and such, but that's usually a much more advanced software. Hello, my name's Theo from WebsitesMadeEasy.tv. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through our top seven plugins we use here at Websites Made Easy on all of our own websites. You should be looking to try and use some, if not all, of these plugins as they will really benefit your business, grow your audience, and draw. So this is mixing a tutorial. Um, you know, it's mixing in the how-to type of video and the screen capture tutorial and the list. And when we get to that, a kind of advertising as well because they're saying this is our company this is what we do I watch this video and I see they know what they're doing maybe I'll hire them jump around a little bit he's just gonna talk about these plugins there might be a graphic that says number five number four or he may just say it there may be annotations on the screen so yeah he's got a graphic here most likely designed in some more professional software possible ways rearranged how you like and used as required we found it to be a very powerful plugin to use. Number five is Contact Form 7. I recommend that one also, Contact Form 7. So, just another kind of video. Think about how you can do a top five, a top three, a top 40, whatever you'd like. Worst of, best of. You could, you could do this kind of video on a regular basis, once a month, once a week, once a day, once a quarter, whatever. But the point is you're going to use YouTube as an advanced user to get you more traffic. The more of this that you create, the more content that you create, the better. Because by default now, I don't like this personally, but I like this as a business. By default, when someone finishes watching the video, Someone's watching the video, they're really liking it, it's ending, we'll talk about that later. The video is ending, after this perhaps final, final advertisement, at the end of the video, by default what will happen is... Coming up next, how to make a killer WordPress site, and it will automatically take me to that. That's what's coming up next. Autoplay is on now. Now someone can turn on a video, and without trying, watch lots and lots of videos right after each other back to back. Uh, YouTube activated this autoplay. I don't like it when I use it. I want to watch the videos that I want to watch. But a lot of people don't know that. And then suddenly it's a new video. Great, I'll watch it. So the point of that is another of James's videos showed up. The more of your own videos that you create, the more YouTube can suggest more of your own videos. So that's cool for content creators. I created all of these videos. I want more views for them. So next up, however, Tyler Moore, someone else's channel with 3 million views. So the more of your own videos that you create, the more your own videos will get suggested or autoplay. So it's suggesting all of these, and there's another one of his down here, how to make a profitable WordPress site, James Stafford, but it's going to go through Tyler Moore first for two and a half hours and then e media coach for two hours, and then back to James for two hours. Look at that. You can make two hour long videos, and they could get views. The default, did the Google default you to uh, yours next, or someone else's that's on the same sub? Both. If you've got plenty of videos to show, it will show you most likely the next video of yours related. If I've got more how-to videos, more WordPress videos, the algorithm will see my own videos and suggest those next. If I've only got one video on how to use WordPress and other videos on something else, it might suggest someone else's video 
of another WordPress tutorial. So the more of this content that I create related, the more YouTube's algorithm could show more of my content. So in general, is it similar to Google? Like your chances of your, your little video showing it has an algorithm exactly that that YouTube has some sort of magic that then figures out how what to display next. So yeah, there is a whole art and science of YouTube optimization which we'll touch on uh, later today. Um, so yeah, it's this this is a whole class that can be taught for four weeks as well. YouTube itself. One more type of video advertisement. This is one of the ones we did for a client. So let me show you this. For that particular one, it was iMovie, but I alternate between iMovie and Windows Movie Maker. Now, it didn't suggest another one from this client. I went off to something about Smarter San Diego, uh, but there are a couple of more videos from that client. It's actually further down on the list over here. So there's another one in that same vein. Let me continue to make you hungry and play another one. Good rule of thumb is usually you're going to spend double the amount of time that you spent recording it. But I that rule of thumb always never really applied for me. I'm seeing it just I, I can't really answer that. I'm really bad myself about keeping track of times of some of things sometimes. So um, I don't I can't. People always ask me how long did it take you to make that? I don't know a day, whatever that means, because we went to the restaurant, we recorded on our different cameras, I then took the videos and edited them together because we're seeing that there's, on, the, on these particular ones, playing it back here again, there, all of this was handheld, and we're getting different shots, and then we're getting these edits where it's here, then it cuts here, and close up here, far away shot, closer shot, because it's food, you want to see it, there's cuts right here, the guy was obviously plating it hand by hand, scoop by scoop, but I went in and cut out the, the, pit, the parts in the middle and it's just, you know, boom, 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 here's the food, it all comes together. And then a different shot, different angle, it's ready, he's adding the final garnish and such. There's this blur effect, notice that close up to the food, uh, the, sh the, the scallops or shrimp are in the focus and, and right behind it that's blurred, and it's deliberate and such, so I don't remember how long it took, it took a while. And you go back and forth, and what's good, what can be better, I'm not happy with this, I'm going to do it again, and this takes practice. This was back from 2013, and I was already making videos for a few years, even at that point. And I honestly think the last video was my best video. Every, every video that I've made, I, I always think I could have done it better. So it's always an ongoing thing. Yes? Um, No, not for music. Um, do you mean music as in like a little soundtrack? Yes, that one can use without having to worry about infringing on copyrights. iMovie comes with, uh, with like a, a picker of music that's okay for you to use. So somewhere in the menu there, I forget what they call it now, but there's, there's, a, there's a menu item to add, to add music that's okay. What I will also say is when we create the account and login, YouTube gives us like 5,000 free songs. So nowadays, I'm usually getting a song off of YouTube 
and putting it on our videos. So um, you always have to be careful about that. When you make a video, it should all be as original as possible. Um, your own music, your own visuals. That's a tall order for most of us. It's probably okay most of the time to use another company's logo and such because we're giving them free advertising. If there's a company that says do not use our logo, worst case scenario is you've got to take that video down, re-edit it, and upload it without the without the the logo. Worst case scenario, here come the lawyers. But it doesn't come to that really, except in the purpose in the in the realm of music. If you if you get that CD, you rip that song, you put it on your video. Worst best case scenario, the video is deactivated. Worst case scenario, here comes a letter from a lawyer. So YouTube gives you thousands of songs, as we'll see, that is okay for us to use. And that's where I recommend you get your sounds. I saw a hand over here. Yes. Yeah. When you do your videos, do you normally do a storyboard? How do you do the concept that you come up with? Uh, I mean, that's a story, so yeah. how do you normally... There, I always recommend my classes, yes, have a plan have maybe a, a script or maybe just things written down. I want to record this, I want to record this, I want to record this. Have a plan. Maybe have an idea, maybe a storyboard, which is simply little drawings of what kind of shots you want to get. Uh, I believe it was Alfred Hitchcock who had like all of his movies as a drawing first and he told the cinematographer, record this. He had the whole movie planned out as, as drawings, him or some other director. So that's what I always tell my students. I almost never follow my own advice. I go to the shoot, I have perhaps an idea, I record things, and then the magic comes together in the editing. I didn't have a plan at all oh, right. for what I was going to do with these. As I then recorded all of these things and started to see, well, this is a story. They're making these dishes. I recorded enough footage that this can be a story in different angles. I never planned, make sure that I'm on the left side here, make sure that I'm on the right side here. I didn't really plan it. And that might work for a lot of you, you know, get it in the editing, that's, uh, that's a term, or get it in post, post-production, that's a term that they use in the industry. You might be lucky or talented enough to be able to get it in post with practice, or you might be a savant. Or you might need to simply write down a few notes. Make sure you record this and record that, and then record it and edit it. So that's why I'm saying that I don't know how long these things take sometimes, because it just, exactly. just happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool because once you start getting into stuff too, you're like, oh wait, I could do this, I could mm -hmm. do that now. Yeah, like I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm looking at this now and I'm like, why why didn't I fix the color, the color balance? It's too yellow here. I, is, that by, is that by design? No. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, then over here when we're in other kind of light, it looks a little bit more neutral. So comparing like that, you know, people are always comparing their own work. So when it's on this angle over here, the light is a little bit more neutral. And, you know, I don't want to color your perception of it, but then when you go back over here, then I believe it's a little too yellow. But most people won't notice. And it's just fine. They like it. Now I'm going to be able to see that more light. What is that from the family um, the more popular, well, uh, as I say also in my social media classes, popularity breeds popularity. So as you get retweets and shares and comments, the algorithm then gets your video in front of more people. So if people are commenting and sharing it and thumbs upping it and all of that, YouTube says, this is a popular video. Let's make it more popular, giving you more views. So all the social networks are like that too. I post something on Pinterest, I start to get comments or likes on Pinterest, Pinterest sees that and starts to show that picture a little bit more. So popularity breeds popularity. Um, so we'll do show one more thing then we'll take a break. Um, we've been looking at the videos themselves individually. They're all tied to a channel. You might hear them as profiles, accounts, channels. Officially the term is a channel on YouTube. On Twitter you might have a profile or an account or a page, whatever. But YouTube we're usually talking about channels. And so on any of these videos you can either go directly to the video with its title or click on the uh, on the um, 
channel name and it'll go to their whole channel and notice there's going to be things that we need to talk about about branding and such because um, the the channel uh, has its own SEO that we need to do but if, if I go look at this particular client so on on theirs it's a very basic one we we, we didn't go through creating the whole complexity of the channel itself because this is all about budgetary options usually but on the channel there's the videos there's um, you know these are the videos that have been uploaded this one ended up this one let me if you compare this one there's another one that we did but this one's got 1,300 views the other ones have got you know 200 150 views and this one this was the most viral of these ones that we did for them it's not as polished I would say as the other ones um, it's still only it's still pretty short 1 minute 36 but this is also because of the keywords risotto nero this is risotto with squid ink so it's black it's uh, I haven't tasted it because I'm not into seafood but it's really enticing and there's not that many videos on YouTube that feature that so you kind of stand out yet another video on lasagna yet another video on pizza you're not going to stand out, but this one with something unique did stand out. We'll see that then we can write some about information, more keywords to be found, links to your various other properties, either social media or like directly to the buy now page, we can do that. Other channel branding, let me show here the company channel. sort of thing here you get um, you can get a preview video here's the recent uploads you can customize this channel to some degree uh, well you're not gonna get it to the point of Marquez Brown Lee he's one of the big names of YouTube he's verified he's got how many followers does he have at the moment only three million mm -hmm. so uh, for us a little bit more modestly but we've got links and such and uh, we can do all of our videos, we can create playlists to organize. Here's a playlist of how to do something. If we've got 40 videos, it's going to be annoying for people to browse through our videos. So we'll talk about creating playlists so that all someone can click play all and all of those get played in a sequence. Other channels that we might promote, if there's any discussion about information, a way to get in contact for business purposes, all of that total views, just about 10,000 views now, and you never know what will be a hit. Just looking at some of our videos here, so okay, 93 views, 75 views. These are more of the advertisement type of videos, 94 views. Video saving view, and then kapow, 10,000 views on a, on a how-to video, how to make an Android app in five minutes, and then after that, how to make a website, and then way back down even 20. And then this one about Peach. This one's gaining some traction, 86 views in two days compared to this one in nine months. Two years. You don't know what's going to be a hit. Depending on your kind of company, it's a good idea to branch out, and I've given you these ideas of possible types of videos to create. It's up to you to create the videos and upload them. We'll be talking about SEOing them, you know, optimizing them to get found. You never quite know. I read a lot of tech um, blogs and I listen to podcasts and such and people are always talking in there even people that have millions of followers on Twitter are always saying you don't know what's going to be a hit you don't know which of your e endeavors is going to resonate you know I hear these people and they say we spent so much time and effort and money to create this video and it didn't take off and on this one that we recorded spontaneously off of our shaky cell phone it took off you don't know if you do have a video that takes off then we can use annotations and cards to go to give more traffic that's already coming here to this other one perhaps or that other one to bring up those views which we'll be doing of course right now it's all the theory stuff we'll be doing the practice in just a moment after the break but um, the sky's the limit with this and again you can make money off of these things you should look at those videos there are those uh, that is those those links about making videos, good examples, learn, see what the competition is doing, and practice, practice, practice. Yes? 
on my channel, I don't have uh, the about in this whole thing. You'll probably need to log in and go over to your settings somewhere. So during the break, we can look at it. But um, that is something we want to fill in when we can. Maybe the tab is deactivated, so we can look in a bit. Any general questions on what we've been talking about so far? A lot to think about, definitely. But the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So it's 11.10. Let's take a 10-minute break. When we come back, I've got a video for you. What we're going to do is create a channel, look at the ins and outs of the channel, upload this video. We can upload it public or private. So we can upload this. No one can ever see it, but you can get practice on how to upload a video and optimize it for views. Right after the break, we'll be back at 11.20.